How do you increase the range of your car per charge or your fuel economy per fill up? It's a question that we're often asked by viewers eager to ensure that they can get as far as possible using as little fuel as possible. We've already covered this topic quite a bit on this channel, and our usual answer comes down to the usual suspects. Range can vary a lot depending on where you're driving, what the weather is like, how fast you're driving, what you've got inside the vehicle, i.e. what you're carrying, how well your car is looked after, and the condition of and type of tyres that are fitted to your vehicle. We then go on to talk about things that can give your economy a boost, such as preconditioning your car before leaving, if it's a feature your car offers, of course, trying to read the road ahead and planning a route that offers smooth, predictable driving and not too many massive changes in elevation. But now we have a new one to add to the list, using adaptive cruise control. At least that's what a new study by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado seems to suggest. It's been busy analyzing data from the Drive Me pilot program in Gothenburg, Sweden, where employees and family of Volvo have had data from their cars collected to see what the impact of autonomous and semi-autonomous vehicle systems have on fuel economy, safety, and much more. In the case of this particular study, NREL focused exclusively on figures for fuel economy when participants were driving with and without adaptive cruise control. That's ACC for short. Adaptive cruise control uses radar systems and sometimes other sensors hidden in the front of the car's bonnet or bumper to judge the distance between the car and the car in front. When activated, the system will keep a preset distance from the car in front speeding up or slowing down as required to maintain that distance, accelerating when safe and appropriate to the maximum cruise control speed set by the driver. If the car in front slows down, the ACC system will slow the car down. If the car in front speeds up, so too will the ACC equipped car accelerate. If you've ever driven a car with ACC, you'll know how useful it can be, especially in busy traffic or on long distance road trips. And as the data from Volvo and NREL shows, it's also good for fuel economy. In fact, when driven with ACC activated, vehicle fuel economies increased, resulting in a 5 to 7% lower fuel consumption than in vehicles with ACC deactivated. Now, before I go on, there are a few things worth noting here. First, the report did focus on cars with internal combustion engines. And second, the data collected was used to estimate the aggregate fuel consumption differences between cars traveling with ACC activated versus ones without. And because data was being collected at a range of different times, there are some high margins of error because actual traffic patterns may have influenced these readings a little. Nevertheless, a 5 to 7% drop in fuel consumption is nothing to be sniffed at, especially as it suggests a similar approach when driving in an electric vehicle could dramatically increase your range. How much? Well, consider this. A car that travels 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour without using adaptive cruise control could when adaptive cruise control is activated, achieve as much as 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour. That's assuming a 7% drop in energy consumption. That might not seem like much at the outset, but think about this. A car like the Kia Niro EV, which has a usable 64 kilowatt hours of battery pack capacity, would travel 288 miles on a full charge at an average fuel economy of 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. At a fuel efficiency of 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour, that same car would extend to 307 miles per charge simply by turning on adaptive cruise control. Now, I know in the real world that kind of change might not be quite as easy to carry out, and this is just back of the napkin maths. I know, I said maths, not math. I'm British. Why is ACC so effective? Well, first, it causes your car to follow a decent distance from the car in front. And while you can change that follow distance, setting it to the longest possible setting should give your car plenty of time to react, which in turn means that it can use regenerative braking to slow itself down rather than rely on friction braking. Second, most people aren't as finessed at speed control in their car as an automated system like ACC. 
There are some caveats. ACC activated cars may not always see someone cut in as quickly as you might, so the system will sometimes respond very aggressively. And not all ACC systems have ways of telling if you're going uphill or downhill. There are those that do, and they should yield better fuel savings. As to those who say they can do better, well, yes, you probably can if you're someone who likes to hypermile and does things like sticking your car in neutral, pulse and glide, and doesn't mind what happens to the traffic around you when you do. If you're someone who is experienced at those techniques, then yes, maybe, no, you'll definitely be able to get better fuel economy. But for your average driver who wants to drive normally, well, ACC is definitely the way to go. Do you use ACC regularly? Does it save you energy? Is it more energy efficient in your experience? Let me know in the comments. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to help us make more of these shows, please do consider sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon, buy us a coffee on Ko-fi, or visit our merch store. With us moving, we'd really appreciate it. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving. <laughs>